Hi everybody, Omar Kazarski, Creative Director of Bauer Web Solutions, www.bauerwebsolutions.com. In this uh, short video, I just want to give you an overview of the uh, basic back-end administrative interface to WordPress. And this version is the latest version as of this uh, recording, which is 3.31. WordPress is an open source communal um, software package that allows one to create a blogging website. A blog is a site that allows you to create daily or weekly entries on a variety of topics, but WordPress can also be used as the back-end mechanism to create an entire site if you so choose to. The advantage of a WordPress site is that although it might not give you total control over uh, editing every single aspect of your site it does have built-in content management systems built in so you'll be able to edit the basic content and add and delete pages within your website if you visit our website bowerwebsolutions.com you will see uh, links to our WordPress services as well as links to an online demo so what I have here is a basic right out of the box installation of WordPress you know the only thing different is it just has this custom logo header of this fictitious company here but this is in essence right out of the box and we can see here uh, in this fictitious demo site uh, this website owner has created two blog postings and they're kind of listed here on this home page so this particular installation just has one uh, page a home page there's no additional pages like an about page or a contact page anything like that and it's just a running list of blogs so if you're you know an organization or a hobbyist that uh, just wants to write about a certain topic then this would be a, an installation indicative of something that you might create so how do you get into the back end and add posts and just manage the site in general every WordPress site will have a a, a login link out of the box it would be on the either left or right hand side in a, an area here called meta and there's an area here for login now you will be able to log in as an admin but you also have the advantage of allowing people either to log in themselves not necessarily to maintain the site but to add comment or to be a mediator or maybe uh, a guest writer sometimes if you, you want somebody else to write a blog posting or you can uh, disable the ability for them to log in but you can still allow people to comment on your blogs which is the main purposes of blogging it's great to write all this great content but you really want to facilitate conversations and gather a following because once you start gathering a following and you're writing interesting content Hopefully those people will then start to share those links with their various friends either through email or social media networks like Facebook or Twitter and then hopefully draw more traffic or more visitors to your site. Alright, so here I am logging in and I'm going to log in as the administrator using the special administrator password. Alright, so when you first come to uh, logging into your backend of WordPress, this is in essence known as the dashboard. Um, this little pop-up window has come up here indicating a new feature you know we've combined the admin bar and the old dashboard header into one consistent toolbar hover over the tool items to see what's new well I'm going to dismiss this here and with this new version of WordPress you might see these little kind of pop-up things saying hey this is new but nothing to worry about so I just want to give you a quick overview of what the dashboard is so all of the different dashboard links are available here on the left hand side of your screen okay up on the top in this gray shows you uh, the, the site that you're logged into if you wanted to visit the actual site you know live as as the general public would see it you would go to the 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 top choice here of the name of your site in the dark gray and from the drop down say visit site okay so this is what the actual site looks like and to go back to that uh, dashboard again you go to the top left hand corner and uh, drop down menu to dashboard which is where we were before okay so in the main home screen of the dashboard it's giving you an overview of 
what's going on right now. You have two posts, you have you don't have any pages, you have one category, and uh, various things in discussion. If people if people have made a comment on one of your postings, if you've approved it, if there's a comment that's still waiting to be approved or pending, and if there's in certain cases if there's a posting that the computer believes it's a spam posting made by a robot and not by a real person, it'll indicate it here. All right. And in the top left-hand corner, there's a thing here that says Screen Options. You can determine, you know, what information shows up on this main screen here. You know, recent drafts, you know, WordPress news, etc. I try to keep it simple, you know, with the information that I deem as important here. All right. So this is your dashboard. When you click on home, it brings you to that same area. Okay, so this is the home of your dashboard, a kind of quick look of what you got going on on your site. The next choice here in that vertical menu on the left hand side is updates. So if there's an update to the WordPress software, um, maybe because there's new features or security fix or something like that, as well as any additional add ons to your WordPress installation to add functionality to the site, known as plugins or themes, updates to some of the visual skins of your site, these would all be available for uh, update here via this interface. I will state for the record that although you know WordPress will occasionally update their software, it doesn't mean they always go smoothly. It is always recommended that you back up your website and your database for your WordPress before you do any updates in the event that there's a problem you can always go back to the previous working version and we are always here to help you with that but if you choose to do it yourself which you're more than entitled to do with any WordPress websites that we have created for you bear in mind you know let the buyer beware um, if you're going to do it yourself please 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 back up your information first okay so over here we have posts so I can click on posts and I can see a post is you know one of your writings one of your articles so I can see all the posts that I've written throughout time here if I wanted to add a new one I would click on add new and which I'll show you later categories you know if I blogging about certain aspects so let's say that uh, I'm blogging about food I might categorize my different postings. I might have one category for uh, dinners and another category for desserts or another category for um, entertaining. So to make it easier for my viewers to to see various topics as I write blog postings on different subjects I would probably want to categorize them with different categories or you could have a posting that you know let's say that you're talking about in that previous example showing um, talking about having a dinner party you might have it have a posting consist of more than one category it could fall under dinner it can fall under entertaining all right tags this is just a way to um, you know uh, one of many different ways to help your site you know uh, better show up in search engines by adding you know uh, appropriate tags to your postings or to your sites as far as you know how it should be listed on your um, in search engines in the media section here the media section is where you when you upload uh, various um, visual content to your site whether that be like a an image like a JPEG or a GIF or a PDF, things of that nature would, would, would show up here and you'll see a running list of the entries within your media library. The links section, if you wanted to create a, a sidebar that has links, maybe links to other online resources or other strategic partners or just uh, third-party websites, you can add those links here and then through another section of the WordPress admin you could have those appear on various pages of your site. So it's kind of a, like a, a resource section if you will. 
Okay, if your site has pages, as I mentioned before, this particular um, WordPress installation is just strictly a blog, but if you had a, a WordPress site that was both a blog and had static web pages, you would use the pages section to edit those pages, create new pages, even arrange where they are in the main uh, navigation as far as their order, you know, add pictures to those pages, change the content, etc. Okay, so that's in the pages section. Comments, when a user visits your site and they read a blog posting or in certain cases perhaps even a static page of your site and they wish to make a comment, those comments are recorded here. And with the user interface of uh, the administrative features of WordPress, you can decide whether to let anyone and everyone add comments or if you're going to require them to create an account in order to add comments. And do you want those comments to be added immediately to the site without you knowing about it? Or do you want to first have them in a, in a holding bin that you can first read them over and approve them to make sure that they're not um, either spam or something inflammatory against you or your site or some other organization. So you, those are all different settings that you can do. But within the comment section, this is where you actually see them and you can read them, approve them, even reply back to the person, Okay, which is key to get a conversation going, get buzz about your blog posting and your site in general going on throughout the web. In the appearance section, this is where you can manage a theme. A theme is a visual overlay to your site. The content remains the same, but uh, using a different theme allows you to change uh, some of the content, so some, uh, some of the visual aspects of your site. Uh, some themes allow you more functionality than others, but in essence, you know, within the appearance section, you will have the ability to choose a different theme, create widgets. Widgets are little uh, snippets of code that would show up on a sidebar, like the aforementioned links, or if you wanted to add a calendar for your uh, postings or a search bar. Those are all different things that you can add as well as create custom menus if you uh, so desire. And as I mentioned, certain themes have certain options, like you can change it from a, a light uh, scheme of a light background with dark type versus a darker color scheme with a dark background and, and lighter text. You can change the link color and the general default layout in certain situations as well as changing a background or the header if you wanted to use a different image as well. Okay. Now the in the appearance section you have an editor but this is for people that understand code so unless you're going to start tinkering with the actual code in the back end you know foundation of your site do not go to the appearance editor because you'll actually start changing things and if you're not careful you might wind up breaking something. Plugins or add-in third-party uh, functionalities that you can add. Um, some WordPress sites make use of them, others do not. Um, plugins are, are definitely not required, but you know some some websites do use uh, plugins. So this is where you can turn them on and off and. Uh, in certain situations, you know, change some of their settings as well. The users. This is where you can uh, create users and give them different access permissions. You can create another administrator account that will allow for uh, them to have total control over the site, or you can create other users such as an editor or a contributor that maybe they'll be allowed to uh, create blog postings but they won't be able to say change the website or install plugins or things of that nature. 
um, every user will also have a link to edit their profile if they wanted to change their name or their contact information you know that's all within the users category and within the tools category you have a uh, certain you know uh, back-end functionality to allow for instance um, you to import information from another resource or export out your your content which is you know one possible way of uh, backing up your site and then finally within the settings this is where you change general settings about your site like the title that it shows up on the on the top of the uh, the browser windows what the address is your email you know if people can register or not the date format so that's all under general settings within the writing setting determines how you know the behaviors of your blog if you create a blog will it have a the you know default category you know if you're going to enable the ability to actually send your post via email or remote publishing there are programs out there for iPhones and Androids to allow you to actually add uh, postings, blog postings to your site using your phone so you would need to go to this uh, settings writing category and enable some of these features if you're going to use some of those third-party smartphone apps. In the reading section this determines how many posts, blog postings, and items are shown at, at one time you know and for each article if you're going to see the full text or just a summary the discussion deals with comments so you have different settings for you know commenting on the different articles and uh, if WordPress should email you to alert you if someone has posted a comment or if there's a comment that needs to be approved so if anything's dealing with comments or just overall discussions about your site are found within the settings discussions category in the media category uh, defaults as far as you know changing the the size of thumbnails and large size of the pictures that you import and how it embeds certain files and where would it upload those files to your system if you needed to change that you have a privacy setting which will enable you know or determine whether or not your website is allowed to be searched by search engines like Google and Yahoo and Bing uh, you know so usually for the most part um, you would allow search engines to index your site however in this particular case we decided not to allow search engines to index this site mainly because it's just a demo site and we honestly didn't want to waste the search engines time to to catalog this um, but in most cases, most public sites, you would, you would want your site to be visible and allow search engines to index the site. And finally, permalinks is a setting that um, we recommend that most people use. It is not required, but every by default, every posting that WordPress does is categorized by... Uh, one would say a, a cryptic series of numbers it's really just what they they call an inquiry but to make it a little bit more uh, user or human friendly you can change the settings from a default to something that's a little bit more uh, legible or understandable uh, to human users here and that just simply you know uh, changes the web address for your different postings instead of just a series of numbers and symbols to perhaps you know the date and the category you know listed there and you can see the different choices there alright so that's just an overview of the dashboard again nothing really meant I didn't go into anything in into great depth um, but in uh, future videos I will show you how to add a uh, a, a simple post and um, other features as well so finally the last thing you would want to do is log out you know just in case somebody you know you're sharing your computer with someone and you don't want them to have access to the site so you go to the top right hand corner of your browser and say log out 
and now you're back to the login screen so if you wanted to log in as a different user you can do that or very simply click on the link here in the bottom to go back to the main site okay so that's a brief introduction to the um, administrative interface or back end or what they call in WordPress terminology the dashboard so hope you found this video tutorial interesting and if you have any specific WordPress questions or need or need uh, customization of a WordPress site please uh, contact us at our website www.bowerwebsolutions.com thanks a lot